Nepal has come a long way since the civil war. With the finalizing of a new constitution, the country could achieve full political normalization. Nepal has also made very substantial gains in reducing poverty and expanding access to services. However, on the economic front, Nepal has not seen a peace dividend and it has fallen behind relative to its neighbors and peers. Over the past four decades, the gap between Nepal and its neighbors has widened significantly. In 1995, the GDP per capita of Bangladesh was only 35 US dollars higher than that of Nepal's. In 2012, the gap stood at almost 200 US dollars. With comparatively modest rates of economic growth, Nepal may not be able to achieve its own goal of reaching middle income status by 2022. To do so, it would need to achieve real GDP growth of 7% and to maintain such growth over time. Countries around the world that have achieved a permanent reduction of poverty have achieved levels of growth of 10% or more per annum and sustained those levels of growth for decades. The most obvious and recent example of this type of success is China. Nepal needs to do the same thing. But for that to happen, it needs to do some hard work. First of all, the government and the people of Nepal need to articulate a vision for the future of their country. Second, they need to understand what policy and institutional reforms need to be undertaken to realize that vision. And third, they need to do the sustained work over many years necessary to implement those reforms and uh, realize the fruits of those reforms. The policy notes that the World Bank has prepared are an effort to contribute to the public discussion about the reform agenda, about what Nepal needs to do to realize higher levels of growth and to sustain those growth rates over time to achieve a permanent reduction in poverty. The policy notes propose a framework based upon three eyes for growth, investment, infrastructure and inclusion. Each of the three eyes are a necessary component for growth. Investment because it is a condition for the productive potential of the economy to grow. Infrastructure because cheaper and reliable power, good roads and access to water and sanitation are the bedrocks of an improved investment climate. Finally, inclusion because more inclusive societies are more stable, which matters for the economy, and because they provide households greater incentives to invest in human and physical capital. The question is, how to go beyond moving out of poverty into really uh, building a society where there is a prosperous middle class. Uh, and the challenge of shared prosperity is precisely about that. It's about going the next step uh, above, above poverty. Uh, and again, that requires uh, a focus on the kind of jobs that can accomplish the trick. The kind of jobs that will not take you just from being barely below the poverty line to barely above the poverty line, but really into something else. I think there is broad concurrence between the main economic challenges uh, that the policy notes identify and the government's own priorities, namely to kickstart growth, to improve the business climate, um, to redress our crippling infrastructural bottlenecks, and to augment the quality and quantity of our public expenditures. Nepal has a fantastic opportunity to lay solid foundations for future prosperity and the time to seize them is now. Uh, we hope you enjoy our report. It's available on our website to be downloaded. Please have a look at it and share your feedback. We welcome your engagement as we work together to help Nepal to grow and to lift people out of poverty.